Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2004 Chevy Trailblazer LT. Up front is a 4.2 liter inline 6 and down below is a 4 speed automatic transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this here Trailblazer for two reasons. First of all, it has a straight 6. A 2000s American car with a straight six. That's interesting and that's something you don't see anymore. Here in 2021, I can't think of any American vehicles that come with a straight six. So that's pretty special. But the second reason I'm excited to be driving this is because this car is owned by my close friend Brent and this car has been in his family for quite some time. So I'm excited to share that little piece of history. But let's get back to that 4.2 liter straight six. It makes about 275 horsepower, 275 foot pounds of torque, which isn't too bad. It's actually decently powerful and it's decently torquey for what you need. Now, if you do need to tow, there is a V8 option, but it doesn't get that much more horsepower. However, where this engine really starts to suffer is the fuel economy. Now I'm putting the factory EPA estimated fuel economy of this here Trailblazer up on the screen. However, according to the owner, he gets about 12 to 14 on average. So some real world consumer driving, expect about 12 to 14 miles per gallon here in the city. All right, a little bit of straight six trailblazer for you. <laughs> I rolled down the rear window on accident. It has straight six qualities. It sort of sounds, you can definitely tell by the sound of it and the feeling of it that it's not a V6, it's not a V8. It still has that torque, but it has this sort of higher note when revving. That being said, it's a very comfortable amount of power. Is this gonna throw down crazy lap times at Autobahn Country Club? Not quite, and I wouldn't be surprised if the owner has tried that, but this isn't anything crazy. The interesting part about this engine, besides the fact that it's an American straight six, was the fact that it got one of the top 10 best engine awards for multiple years in a row which is interesting because this engine really only came in this car. Now it came in the GMC Envoy, which is essentially a rebadged version of this car. It came in an Isuzu product, which was essentially a rebadged version of this car. It did come in the Buick Rainier, which is essentially a rebadged version of this car. And it also came in a Saab, which is essentially a rebadged version of this car. So while it came under a lot of different names, they were really all the same vehicle. Now the one downside of the 4.2 liter straight six is the fact that it wasn't a very popular engine. Yes, it was in a ton of different vehicles, but it was only ever made from 2002 to 2008, a six year life, which isn't that long in terms of engines, especially compared to its sibling, the 5.3 liter V8, which was actually inside the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. It's been around that long. The 5.3 liter, you can find a, a head gasket or a piston ring, you know, somewhere in the trees around here, I think. So the 4.2 liter is a lot less common. And so you walk into an O'Reilly's, it's not a super guarantee that they'll have parts for you. Now you can always order them online, but it's just something to think about if you want a longevity vehicle. All right, that first pull wasn't really good. So let's do a second one here. It definitely revs like a straight, I mean, it is a straight six, so it, it makes sense why it revs like a straight six, but it almost has a slight BMW-like quality to the way it sounds once it's above 4,000 RPM, but that could just be because that's the most straight sixes I've really dealt with have been BMWs, high revving straight sixes at least. I've driven a first gen Mustang with a straight six, as well as a Triumph TR6, but those are carbureted and those feel very different. If you've ever driven a 330i BMW from the early 2000s, it feels very similar to that, honestly. Now, like I said, paired to it is a four speed automatic transmission. It is the 4L60E from GM, which has been put in every single automatic GM rear wheel drive product from the 90s up until the mid 2000s. 
Last but not least, this here Trailblazer is four-wheel drive, and we'll talk about how to select that a little bit later on. All right, so to save us both some time, I'm going to be doing today's sponsor reads, hot lapping the test track in my 2019 Mazda 3 all-wheel drive. The first sponsor is Fixed. Fixed is an automotive OBD2 sensor that you plug into your car and it gives you tons of really cool diagnostics. Click the link in the description below and you will get an offer code for my viewers only. You get a bunch of money off. Next is Con Plates. You don't want to stick the plate on the outside of your car. Cool. Stick it out with some suction cups. And last but not least, if you want to sell your car, go to cashforcars.com. Click the link in the description below, get a free quote, and they'll pick up your car in less than 24 hours. Thank you to all the sponsors for making these reviews possible, and that is a lap. So now we gotta talk about the interior. We have quite a bit to go through in here, and I'm super excited to do so. Well, in front of me, I have a bunch of different gauges. On the left is the tachometer, in the center is the speedometer, and on the right, I have my oil pressure, battery voltage, fuel, and coolant temperature. I really like the design of these gauges. Very simple, plain, and this is what I grew up around. These are very typical gauges for GM products of the early 2000s. That's exactly what they are. This is a 2004, so they fit right in. On the steering wheel, interestingly enough, I have voice commands, source program, trip and fuel economy on the left, and seek volume information and back on the right so down at the bottom half of the steering wheel these controls are for the little digital readout in the gauge cluster so i can cycle through a bunch of different things which i am showing on screen now and i really like the fact that gm has always been very good about giving you plenty of information in their vehicles this goes all the way back to the c5 corvette to my knowledge probably even earlier and i've always praised gm for this any information i want to know i can pretty much know albeit it's a dated way of doing so with the green lights but at least i get that information to the left of me i have my headlight switches fog light switch which this does have aftermarket fog lights fitted, but this is the factory fog light switch. Dome light and gauge dimmer switch finish out the left-hand side. Now on the door, I do have two different memory seat options, my power windows, power locks, and my heated seat option. So the seats are power, memory, and heated, which is very, very nice. Moving into the center, I have two climate control vents and then my radio. Now, of course, the radio has since been changed out because every radio from the early 2000s was garbage. And I like the look of this Pioneer unit. To the left of the radio, this is where I'll find my four wheel drive options. So I have two high, automatic four wheel drive, four high and four low. So I like the customization of it. Gives you a couple different options here in the Trailblazer. So whatever you need it to do, it can do. Down below that, I have my rear wiper settings, which is interesting to find on the center stack. Normally you find that where the normal wipers are found, but Chevy decided to change things up a bit. Below the radio, this is where we find our climate controls. Now, one interesting thing about this is that I do have dual zone climate. So the passenger can actually change or choose a different temperature than the driver. However, the fan speed is the same across the board. So while the passenger may decide to choose a different temperature, they're getting it at the same speed that you're getting your temperature, which I find kind of comical. And might I add, the heated seats are actually still working 17 years later, which is awesome. Down below the climate controls, I have two 12 volt outlets, and then we get onto the center console itself. I have a little pen holder essentially, not sure what else that cubby's really for. And I have two cup holders, so we will do the big friggin' model test. And unfortunately it fails up front, but I'm gonna give it a pass for the single rear cup holder that is found behind the shifter. And you kinda gotta jam it in there, but it works. Down below those two front cup holders and in front of the rear cup holder is the shifter itself. Now this is a very basic shifter you'll find in pretty much every GM product from the same era. The automatic Camaro comes to mind immediately. However, it has a nice, satisfying clunk when you put it into gear. It's very satisfying, and I really, really like that. I know when I'm in gear, and I know when I'm changing gear. It's not numb. As well as the button on the side, again, is very satisfying. Now, we already talked about the cup holder at the bottom of the center console, so let's talk about the seats. 
The seats are nice and comfortable. They are leather, part of the LT package, and they have pretty good support. Now, they're not sporty at all. They have no side bolsters. However, this isn't a sporty vehicle, so getting in and out of it is nice and easy given these seats. But we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review as well as a trunk review. Ah! All right, so we're in the back of the 2004 Chevy Trailblazer LT. And first of all, the room back here is really, really nice. My knees are barely touching the front seat, um, but if I move them slightly, they're not. Headroom is pretty good. Probably got about two, three inches up above my head and I'm 5'11". Down below here, I do have, interestingly enough, my own radio controls. So I can plug headphones, it's a standard aux input, into this little radio down here and I can adjust the volume both the left passenger and right passenger, or right passenger and left passenger, can have their own volume for the radio, which is very, very nice. And they can change the source, seek, and things like that. I also have rudimentary climate controls down here. I can pretty much just tell it to send it to my feet or head, and fan speed, but that's about it. Finishing out that center console, I have a 12-volt outlet and two little fold-out cup holders. Let's try the big friggin' bottle in them, and they don't work. However, they still are decent sized cup holders. Now I don't have a center console back here, but there is one interesting party trick with these rear seats, which is the fact that these bottoms actually fold up like I'm demonstrating now. So if you have obscure cargo or anything of that nature, you can fold them up, as well as these seats do fold flat, but let's talk about that with the trunk. All right, so we're around the back of the Chevy Trailblazer, and one thing I wanted to point out, first of all, before we open this, is the rear glass comes up, which I always thought was a cool feature, but I never understood the importance of it. So it has been recently brought to my attention that when you have things back here that are rolling around, when you drive, they don't always end up in the same spot that you put them in. So let's say actually a friend of mine had eggs in the back and they moved all the way up until here. So she went to open the tailgate and the eggs fell out because it has a flat bottom. Well, the openable window actually changes that. So I'm really happy to see that the Trailblazer has that. So let's open up the full and you can see what I mean. I mean, it's flat. So if anything rolls up against it, it's just going to roll right out. Anyway, getting into the actual trunk of the Trailblazer, this, contrary to what it looks like, is not actually stock. This is a stealth sub box, which is aftermarket, just an FYI. But what is stock are these tie downs, which is very, very nice. Again, this would make a great camera car. Tie down a tripod, open up the rear window, and you're completely safe. Over here, interestingly enough, Is a cubby um not sure why not sure what it does um but it's here speaking of cubbies whoop you have a cubby there now one last party trick bada bing bada boom so you can fold these seats down and this offers a ton sorry got to get the branding in there this offers a ton of rear room for camping, for moving things. I mean, just tons and tons of room here in the Trailblazer, and that is all done by folding the seats down, and it offers a nice level, well, mostly level, loading floor, which is absolutely awesome. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and I don't think this is a particularly handsome vehicle. However, I love the look of it just because of the nostalgia. When I grew up, this was the car. I mean, this was the modern trailblazer that people drove around. When I was in school, this is what parents drove. When I went to the park, I saw one. When I went to the store, there was a couple of them. And so this is ingrained in my nostalgia, and that's why I like the look of it. Even further so, back in 2004, my parents were looking for a new vehicle. And I've said this in reviews before, but it was between a Nissan Quest, a Chrysler Pacifica, and actually this exact color of Chevy Trailblazer. I don't know what trim my parents were looking at, but I remember we test drove one and even brought it home. And it was exciting because in my lifetime, that was the first time my parents were interested in a new car. It was my first time ever really riding in a car that wasn't owned by my grandparents or my parents. I was seven at the time. And unfortunately, 
my parents went with a Chrysler Pacifica for whatever reason. But that ties into my final talking point, which is the nostalgia of this vehicle. I was born in 1997. So when this car came out, like I said, I was seven years old. And that's really an important, crucial time in my life. Because when you start to become seven, you start to actually have memories from that era. I remember distinct things from 2003 and 2004. I had individual thoughts and ideas and I was formulating my own sentences around this time. And when you start to think on your own and learn on your own and form sentences on your own, you start to take notice of the world around you. And so being into cars, always being into cars, I noticed this here trailblazer. But it goes further than that. GM really understood how to build comfortable cars in the late 90s, early 2000s. Now, they didn't build the sturdiest or most well-built, long-lasting cars, but they built some of the comfiest. Everything in here just reminds me of my childhood. And I'm switching now to my childhood first video camera. Doesn't this car just feel right when it's filmed with this camera? It just looks better. It looks more proper when filmed in 480p. This is how I remember the Trailblazer. And so to finally be driving one 14 years later, this car still brings me comfort. And so if you wanted a quick little buyer's guide on an 04 Chevy Trailblazer LT, here you go. Thanks for watching. But to end the video, I really wanted to get into a metaphor. Like I said earlier, this car is owned by a very close friend of mine, Brent. And with Brent, I'm also close to his brother, Alex, and I really enjoy his entire family. And so this Trailblazer used to be owned by Brent and Alex's grandfather before he passed away. And you know, to be honest, I wish I could have shaken that man's hand because he led to two of the best people I've ever met. And he also had a pretty good taste in cars because this thing really is great. And that's the point I wanted to get to is that Brent and Alex's entire family, I can be myself around them. Their family brings up positivity out of me. I can be myself and I don't have to worry about judgment. That's how I feel about this trailblazer. It just takes me in for who I am and it doesn't judge me. It makes me nice and comfortable. It does the work and there's just this sense of nostalgia, this sense of the good times. This vehicle brings out the best in me because it gives me the freedom and security to do so, much like the Nagy family. And so Brent is ready to move on and this car deserves another life. Brent has an RSX Type S that gets all of his love and attention. This is just a daily driver that sits outside now. It deserves a new life and it deserves to make a new family comfortable, to let its new driver and owner express itself in its own way. And that's what the Trailblazer is good for. While it's gonna be hard to see this thing go, the memories aren't going anywhere. This will always have a special place in the Nagy family's hearts. And I respect it for that. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Brent for letting me take out his Trailblazer. I know this car is special to him. And I'm glad that I finally got to experience a non-SS Trailblazer. Now, I have reviewed an SS Trailblazer, and that's linked in a couple of seconds here. But I'm glad I get to finally experience what this is like. And that's all thank you to Brent. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.